Histogram theory is incredibly important to understanding how to get the most dynamic range out of your images and make the most interesting image possible. If you're able to achieve a full range of exposure from the darkest pixel values of black to the lightest pixel values of white, you'll be able to achieve a much better contrast in your image than just using a small section of your histogram. Not always, but typically, a higher contrast will make certain aspects of your image pop more than others and therefore will attract the viewer's eyes to certain parts of the frame more strongly. This is a really good image to start out on because mostly it's contrasted pretty well on the histogram, as I'll explain in one second, but the bison itself is pretty dark and we want to make sure that we can recover that a little bit better so you can see it better and make the whole image still retain that contrast that it originally has and even enhance it a little bit. So what this histogram is, is on the bottom end, you have a zero value. This is pure black over here. And on the top end, you have your value of 255 luminance um, from an exposure standpoint. And what that means is that it's pure white. Within this range from zero to 255, you have every single exposure value of your pixels along this histogram. So the further it is to the left, the darker it is, the further it is to the right, the brighter it is. So if you take a look at this image as a whole, this histogram represents every pixel in this image. You'll notice that um, for the most part, it's spread out pretty well and pretty evenly, which means it has a pretty good base contrast to start with, but it is missing a little bit of the very top high end. And we do have it a little bit too heavily invested into the blacks right down here, where really this bison head is. That's what's causing this spike over here on the left side. So what we wanna do is hopefully even that out at least a little bit while still retaining the contrast and shift the whole histogram slightly over to the right. So um, what we will do in this image to start out is we will bring up the exposure to shift the whole, you'll notice the whole histogram just shifted up to the right. So you notice I go back and forth, shift it all the way up to the right. Now I'm actually gonna bring this down a little bit more. Um, and then what we're gonna do next is we're also gonna spread out the image just a tad. Um, I'm gonna bring the contrast maybe up to there. That way we get a little bit more spread in the histogram, maybe a tad bit higher. Now, um, you're noticing even more so now that now that we've spread it out even more and brought the exposure up, we really have a spike up here and we have a spike down here. Um, so what we wanna do, let's start to get rid of this up top here first. So I'm gonna pull my highlights down a lot and you notice that as I do that, it really helped move the pixels out of this highlights range. So if I move over the histogram, you'll notice that this shows that this is the highlights area. It really helped flatten that out, move it out of that range. I think I did a little bit too much, so we're gonna go back to maybe about there. But um, that will help with keeping it from getting too bright. So let's go, uh, before you'll notice, like a lot of this is kind of peeking back here, maybe some stuff like that. But as we flatten that out, all those super bright parts, so in the front down here, and also right here, um, whoopsie, uh, those parts get flattened out. So that is the value in pulling down my highlights right there. But we still have the problem with these very, very dark parts down here. So what I wanna do here is I actually wanna bring up the shadows quite a lot. And you'll notice as I did that, the whole histogram just started to flatten dramatically. So um, let's pull it up even more, maybe to about there. And now I have such a more widespread, evenly spread image across the histogram. So this is before, after. Now we have all this detail back in the bison and it looks really good. Starting to get to the direction we want it to get. Now, in my opinion, it actually might be just slightly too flat. <laughs> so um, what we wanna do to maybe counteract this a little bit is we're gonna mess with this top end here. We're we're no I'm noticing that right here at the very top, we still are missing those whites is what they're called. So what I actually wanna do there is bring up the whites. That way I can pull things towards that a little bit. And that helps pull my whole range out towards the whites and increase the, the amount of exposure in the whites area. So let's go before and after. You'll notice the whole image just got a lot more pop on the top end of the histogram. So it really helps to just help with that full, now we have the full histogram top to bottom. 
And lastly, I am, so I am thinking to myself that even though the histogram shows that it's pretty well spread, I do want a little bit less brightness in the black fur of this bison. Um, it's always an interesting thing with subjects that have black feathers, black fur, because um, you don't want to lose them totally in the blacks, but you do want to represent their color as being black. And it's starting to look a little too grayish here. So I'm just going to very minutely pull down the blacks, which will just uh, decrease the bottom end a little bit more or pull it a little bit more to pure black. And before and after, it's very subtle, but I think you'll notice that that difference looks actually really good right there. This scene was taken out of my newly made Adobe Lightroom beginner to advanced editing course. In this three-part course, you'll learn some basic fundamental theories of photo editing and learn how to implement them. It's meant to take someone from the skill level of a beginner or intermediate to being an advanced photo editor and an hour and a half worth of content that will cover nearly everything there is to know about Lightroom. If you're interested, click the link in the description below and the first 20 people to purchase this course throughout the weekend will receive 30% off. I'm also offering a money back guarantee in which if you find yourself unsatisfied with the course, I'll be happy to do a full return for you so that you don't feel like you spent your money poorly. That's how confident I feel that this course will benefit you and that I'm willing to put my own time and money earned on the line. So check out the link in the description below to see more details on the course and purchase and I'll see you guys over there.